Kathy Bach is one of America's largest USDA licensed dog brokers and breeders. Her facility, Pick of the Litter, has supplied dogs to pet shops and homes across the country. Since 1997, the Companion Animal Protection Society, or CAPS, has been investigating allegations of abuse and neglect at Pick of the Litter. We started receiving complaints about Kathy Bach from consumers who had purchased sick and dying puppies. Some of these puppies had very serious hereditary defects. The customers uh, ran up uh, thousands of dollars in medical bills. I have files and files of problems that have come from Kathy Bulk. Generally, the people get these dogs because they feel sorry for the dog and they said, I have to take it, I can't let it stay there. She's had a widespread reputation of breeding defective dogs, being cruel and inhumane in her treatment to dogs, but we never knew what to do about it until CAPS came along and conducted their undercover investigations. We have to be a team that focuses and stays tight. If somebody comes to you and says to you, the inspector is here, you get your work shavings covered, you get your food covered, you get your water bowls full, I don't care if you have not scrubbed or not. All drugs, out of sight, platforms on puppies. And the minute she leaves, we pull them up. Kathy Bauk's facility is a series of barns filled with cages with wire flooring, sometimes multiple dogs per cage. She had approximately 900 adult dogs and 400 puppies. The sound levels in there alone are just deafening. Imagine what that's like for a dog who's got hearing thousands times more sensitive than humans. There's a lot of noise and a lot of confusion there, and the dogs are constantly fighting. Hey! Cut it out! Cut it out, dog! Cut it out! The life situation of these dogs is extremely poor, because anytime a dog is stressed, their immune system goes down. So these dogs had high, high decibels of sound. The cleanliness conditions are not good. She has serious sanitation problems, runoff, fecal accumulation, urine accumulation. Water bowls not being cleaned out, caging that was insufficient for their footing, puppies with legs that would go through the cage flooring. It's horrific. There's no way an average person who even slightly cares about animals can see a facility like that and not be moved to want to take action and do something about it. After more than a decade of investigations, CAPS decided it was time to definitively uncover exactly what was happening to dogs at Pick of the Litter and sent in an undercover investigator to work there. I worked for about two months at Kathy Bach's puppy mill to show that there was a pattern of neglect and abuse that existed at the kennel. How the dogs were handled was generally in a very rough manner. When the cages were being scrubbed, it was very common for workers to just push and even throw the puppies aside roughly on the wire. They would literally be pushed back to the back of the cage like little bowling balls, and they would literally tumble to the back of the cage. When Kathy would move puppies, she would move them by picking them up by one leg and handing them over to other workers. And that trauma to that puppy's shoulder and to that leg can be very dramatic. There's no excuse for that kind of handling. It saves you maybe one second per puppy. There were dogs that were severely emaciated, and to get to that stage, they didn't happen overnight. There was a German Shepherd that was just all skin and bones, and obviously had been for a long time. There was a Mastiff. I don't think that Mastiff could have weighed more than 65, 70 pounds, when they should be up in the hundreds. I remember seeing one severely emaciated pregnant Spaniel who was refused any veterinary care. And Kathy Bach said, well, we can't do anything with this dog because it's pregnant. And that obviously is not a true statement. There's a lot of different things you can do for a dog in that condition. There was a pug with a prop toast eye, which means the eye was actually out of the eye socket. At that point, that eye should have been removed, and they left it in, and that's an extremely painful condition for an animal. Extremely painful. There were some dogs without food and water, dogs with seizures. Dogs with gaping wounds. 
Dogs were just found dead. Emaciation, dehydration, animals being provided no reasonable veterinary care. Dogs can't hardly sew it up. Gonna have to heal. And of course, all these dogs were dipped in this prolate lintox solution. One routine and illegal procedure that was documented at Pick of the Litter was the dipping of dogs into an insecticide to treat them for fleas, ticks, and other parasites. And you bring even the pregnant dogs, the mamas that are having babies, and even the dry up dogs, they all come. It's not a solution for dogs. It is for swine and cattle. It's very toxic. It says so on the label. And it also says not to be put in any kind of mucous membranes, eyes, etc. Their ears get in the solution. She puts their eyes in the solution. And the animal would come up, dripping out of its eyes and licking all this material. I have seen some of these dogs after they've been dipped in aspiration pneumonias and just... Totally against any kind of good veterinary protocol. The dipping of her dogs in toxic insecticide was not the only example of Kathy Bach's abuse through improper veterinary care. Just prior to the CAPS investigation, she had been found guilty of practicing veterinary medicine without a license. While on parole for this conviction, the undercover investigator witnessed Kathy, her husband Alan, and her staff still performing veterinary procedures. She used medications that had expired. She used medications without a prescription. They would put a syringe in one type of solution to inject, take that same syringe and put it in another bottle after they've already injected it into an animal. So the cross-contamination was outrageous. Ear croppings were done. Tail dockings were done. I've had cats come in that she has declawed. I have had to repair spays that she's done, the neuters. There have been a number that have had to be on antibiotics. I mean, the most serious issue is that Kathy was doing cesarean sections herself without anesthesia. I asked Alan about it specifically. So this is not hearsay. This is directly from Alan. I asked him who was doing it. He said, I am doing them myself. I says, in other words, you just tie them down and take the puppies out. Well, if I have to, yeah. One of the more potent examples of Kathy Bach's disregard for the pain and suffering of the dogs under her care comes from the case of a Bichon that started seizing after she had been in a fight. This dog's seizing. What's wrong? It got in a fight, was getting torn up by a Yorkie. It seems to be seizing, just... Yeah, it's seizing. What sucks is this dog? It's good. Subtle. Yeah. Subtle, honey. Subtle. 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 Settle. Oh, baby. Okay, let's put it in off on the wire. Okay. After putting the Bichon in a cage as instructed and waiting several minutes to see what kind of treatment would be given, the investigator decided to go find Kathy to see what was taking so long. He found her working in her garden. Oh. Did I hear you say <laughs> this dog is effing seizuring? No, I don't. I'm gonna say, oh my. Goodness. She was more concerned with his language than with the seizing Bichon, which she ignored. No medical attention was given to the dog, and she was left to suffer. This was, unfortunately, a typical day at Pick of the Litter.
Whether you are a dog lover or not, you will be outraged by what we're about to show you. A Minnesota puppy mill that has sent thousands of dogs to pet shops. Shocking conditions recorded by an undercover investigator. By an investigator for the Companion Animal Protection Society. Kathy Bach has been charged with animal cruelty, torture, and unlicensed practice of veterinary medicine. Her trial is set to begin on March 17th. She's pleaded not guilty to the cruelty charges. In 2008, Vattertill County Sheriff's Office was contacted about Kathy Bouk's facility. CAPS had done their own investigation, very detailed, very professional, and they had brought that information to the Sheriff's Office because they believed it had been in violation of the laws. The trial was a very intense and long process. The judge instructed the jury that the animals involved in the case were not companion animals according to state law. But I believe that that's a misinterpretation of state law. I think specifically here it got into the realm of classifying dogs as livestock instead of pet or companion animals. Dramatic developments involving a breeder who has shipped countless sick dogs to local pet shops. Today, she was convicted of animal cruelty and torture. The jury found Bach guilty of four misdemeanors, including animal cruelty and torture, but not guilty of two felony counts of animal abuse. Had the animals been treated as companion animals, she could have been convicted of felony animal cruelty and torture. She was sentenced to 90 days in jail. 70 days of that were suspended, and so she served a 20-day jail sentence, and I believe a $500 fine. She received 20 days in jail and a $500 fine. Uh, nothing to say that her license was totally pulled. Somehow the judge decided that despite the fact that the Bauks were committing acts of animal cruelty and neglect, they should be allowed to keep their dogs. The short time she was in jail, they gave her work release. So they sent her back to the place where she was committing animal cruelty and torture to continue being cruel and torturing animals while she was serving that sentence. But CAPS President Deborah Howard believes the trial alone had an impact. I think it really brought to the forefront um, the, the atrocities that are taking place at these USDA licensed facilities and the failure of the USDA to enforce the Animal Welfare Act. After Kathy Bach's conviction, Caps took evidence from her case to the Washington, D.C.-based law firm of Crowell and Mooring. For years, they have been working with Caps on a pro bono basis to bring federal changes and oversight to the commercial dog breeding industry. One of the things that we're doing right now on behalf of the Companion Animal Protection Society is we're using the Kathy Bach case as a way to remind the agency that they're not doing a very good job enforcing the Animal Welfare Act. As a breeder operating pick of the litter, Kathy Bach is supposed to comply with all U.S. Department of Agriculture regulations. When she was convicted, the federal government should have gone in and taken an action to revoke her license. And unfortunately, they did not. Uh, we decided that one way to sort of try to give them a kick in the butt, if you will, not literally, but figuratively, was to file something called a petition for rulemaking. What we have asked the Department of Agriculture to do is to clarify in its rules that if they become aware of a situation of a licensee like Kathy Bach that is found guilty or pled guilty to an act of animal cruelty, the license should be automatically revoked. We know that got the department's attention because it was after that that the department energized to terminate her license. Now the USDA is terminating Bach's license based on those animal cruelty convictions. The USDA could revoke Bach's breeder's license, but... Internet sales are not regulated by, by the USDA. And that is a major, major gap in the current program. Since her USDA license has been taken away, she has continued to sell dogs. She can still breed dogs and sell direct to the public, and the law provides no mechanism for dealing with that. And so what CAPS is doing is trying to get both Congress and Department of Agriculture to take a look at it. And so if the public needs to get involved, this is one in the animal welfare world that probably needs a serious look by Congress. I'm such a kind-hearted person. And I think that's why God has been so generous to me this time around. I could have got stopped with a huge ass fine and several years in jail. Thankfully, Kathy Bach has now lost her USDA license and therefore cannot sell to pet shops, brokers, or other breeders. While she is still selling online under a different kennel name, her sales have plummeted 
and fewer dogs are suffering at her facility. But unfortunately, the struggle to change the breeding industry continues. I'd love to say that Kathy Bach is an isolated case. The truth is, she's not. She's not an isolated case. There are hundreds and hundreds like her all over the United States. She's not even the tip of the iceberg. I have been to well over 400 puppy mills, and I have seen conditions all over the United States that mimic what I saw at Kathy Bach's facility. It is rampant in most of the USDA licensed facilities in this country. The Companion Animal Protection Society has been around since 1992, and unfortunately, they've got a very large library of pretty horrific things going on at puppy mills throughout the country. The only thing about it that's not typical is the awareness because of the investigation. That's what's unusual about the Bauk case. The condition in the facility is not unusual. As people become more aware of puppy mills, they're going into pet shops and asking, do you buy from puppy mills? And every single one of the pet stores will say, no, we don't. But that's not true, because it's illegal for a pet shop to sell puppies that they acquire from any source other than USDA licensed commercial sellers. Even some puppy mills that are very clean are still commercial livestock operations, you know, a factory of sorts. It affects our community very strongly because the animals that are produced out of these facilities, they're not given the ability to be socialized. So you end up with animals that don't have the ability to be as good in people's homes as a well-socialized puppy from a very good breeder. We end up with health issues from these facilities. And it's not the dog's fault, but you take it home and it's sick. And all of a sudden that cute little puppy in the window is ill and you've got to either spend a lot of money to try to cure it or put it down. People who are buying puppies online or who are buying puppies from pet stores are supporting this industry. And if the demand for those puppies was gone, these people would be out of business. Every single pet store in the United States is selling puppy mill dogs. While CAPS continues its work to bring legislative changes to the industry, the best thing you can do to stop breeders like Kathy Bach is to avoid buying dogs online or from pet stores. Every year, animal shelters and pounds are forced to destroy millions of dogs, including purebreds and puppies. Please, adopt a companion animal from your local shelter, humane society, or rescue organization. Go to PetFinder.com to find a list of shelters and rescues in your area. For more information on how you can join the fight against puppy mills, visit www.caps-web.org.